This morning, we'll be focusing on those new service standards for ABMs published on Tuesday by the Bank of Jamaica. The Bank of Jamaica says banks are now required to ensure that at least 90% of their automated banking machines, their ABMs, are working at least 95% of the time. That's a key part of a new service standard published on Tuesday by the Bank of Jamaica. According to the Bank of Jamaica, deposit-taking institutions, DTIs, have a nine-month transition period to bring themselves into conformity with the guidelines. Under the new rules, a DTI must have a minimum of 90% of ABM operational at any time it must also maintain a 95% uptime for operational ABM. An ABM must not be without cash for a period exceeding 60 minutes in urban and resort areas and 180 minutes in other areas. The BOJ says compliance will be assessed through the BOJ's review and a publication of monthly reports from the DTIs. However, no monitor sanctions will be applied as a result of breaches of the guidelines. Guidelines, but none adherents may give rise to supervisory concerns around safety and soundness with the attendant supervisory consequences. South St. Catherine MP Fitzjackson last year tabled a motion in Parliament calling for the central bank to set minimum service standards for ABMs. For reaction to these new standards, we're being joined by himself, Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Southern Fitzjackson, as well as Chartered Accountant and Financial Commentator Dennis Chung. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Hi, my name. Mr. Please Jackson? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on Nationwide this morning. So, as we just indicated, uh, Mr. Jackson, you tabled a motion in Parliament last year calling for the Central Bank to set some minimum service standards for ABMs. We have here this morning uh, a raft of measures that they've announced. What do you make of them? Do you believe they go far enough? Um, my first response is to say I'm very welcoming of the promulgation of these sets of standards, and it's against the background as um, where it was a do as you please in terms of these institutions, and at the end of the day, the, the banking customers, uh, our people, suffer on a daily basis from me. So to have established now some standards is a good starting point. The quick say question is, is, is it adequate? Um, I believe the, what I've read so far um, is reasonably good. However, there's a number of clarifications that need to be, um, to be had. And I, you know, I don't want to drill down on those until I get the clarification. Do I think the public will need it itself? I'm a bit concerned, too, about the, the explicit exclusion of any pecuniary, any monetary penalties for breaches. And the document says they will be relying upon um, supervised consequences. Yes. What are those? Is it a top on the risk and say you're a naughty boy, do stop doing it and it keeps on repeating? I don't know. But on the surface of it, that is inadequate. Um, you know, so I want to drill down more on that and hear from the DOJ what this, this um, supervised conse consequences entail so far as acting as a deterrent for any breach on their part, having established what the standards are. Um, another reservation I have, when I read the text of the, of, the, of the document, it seems it would appear in many instances as if it's a record-keeping procedure that they are doing rather than imposing a requirement for them to adhere to, and particularly against the absence of any any monetary uh, penalty for breaches. So those are some of the things which are of concern to me. But generally, I think I think it's very broad. Um, that is welcoming to deal with much of the issues that not I have been complaining about, but the public has been complaining about. The motion I tabled in, in, in Parliament was a response to the realities that the people are facing across the country. The adequacy of, of, the, of, the, um, of the machines that are available, and it's another era where I see that there's some deficiency. Um, when people put their money in the banks, they are supposed to have reasonable access to those in terms of reach. So, you know, a big bank like an NCB or a, or a, or a BNS that spreads across the country, for the reach that you have, what is the adequacy of the provisions? Um, of your ATM to so allow people to access their monies, to get their, their cash, 
the document acknowledge that 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 cash is important, notwithstanding the increase in in um, in online digital um, um, transactions. Uh, take so, a, yes, take a pause there, Mr. Jackson, and I'll bring in Dennis Chung. Dennis Chung, Mr. Jackson is saying that. What has been indicated by the BOJ seems to be more of a, a record-keeping thing than anything else. He's um, also concerned about the fact that he's not seeing any sort of uh, financial sanctions and is questioning what does the BOJ mean by supervisory consequences. How do you see it? Yeah, well, I, I, I agree with Fitz that you know, there needs to be some, some sanctions outlined. Um, I don't necessarily agree it's just a record keeping though. I think that what we're seeing is a transition. And um as you said there's gonna be banks a nine month period uh, to satisfy all the requirements. I think during that time that you'll see that um the sanctions are outlined as to what it is. I think it's a very good move in our always maintaining um that the BOJ needs to issue a code of conduct. So this is a good start. But then it's a code of conduct for how banks operate, just like what happens in, in other jurisdictions. Um, and that's really the only way that we're going to address it from a supervisory level. And, you know, I, I think that if you have that in place also, you could actually relax some of the, the measures that are anti-competitive um, in the sector. But I think it's a good start. I mean, I think that if banks are going to be closing physical offices, then there needs to be access provided. And the access needs to be convenient, and it needs to be up all the while, because the truth is that what is happening right now is that you really can hardly get access to the money that you have, right, because you don't want to go in the bank. If you go in the bank, you're going to, it's more unproductive than going into a tax office, right? Um, and you, you can't access your money easily if you want cash. You know, so I, I think that this is a very good move that the BOJ has done long overdue. Still, we have some more to go in terms of establishing a proper code of conduct, which I, a few years ago, I had worked on it with the Consumer Affairs Commission of the Caribbean. BOJ has done nothing about it. Um, and I think it's essential that if we want to develop this economy to one that is productive and uh, one that, 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 that considers the movement of financial transactions that we have to get a proper code of conduct in place. We have to have a financial sector that is accessible. And, you know, if we want to encourage people to move towards uh, being a part of the financial sector, you can't say to them, we want you to be a part of it. But at the same time, the practices are keeping you out. So I, I agree with most of what we just said. Let's take the break, gentlemen. When we come back, we look at some of the well, some of the, 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 the interesting bits according to my reading, and then we can discuss what is absent from the document on top of what both of you have identified. The MP for St. Catherine South, well, South St. Catherine Fitz Jackson is with us, along with Chartered Accountant and Financial Commentator Dennis Chung, reacting to the publication by the BOJ of minimum service standards for deposit taking institutions which operate automated banking machines, ABM, across the country. Fitz Jackson, the, under the section marked ABM fees and charges, that's the first section I looked for when I went through the document because I know that that's a, a highly contentious issue for customers. And uh, the, the, the customers, the listeners rather, don't have the benefit of the document. So I'm going to, going to read a couple of the, the points here. It says, uh, customers have the right to transparent information about product services and their prices, transparently and comprehensively disclose ABM fees and charges to customers, including displaying them prominently at ABM locations, and represent all fees in units of Jamaican dollars to avoid ambiguity before increasing ABM fees. This is the key, the key one now. Before increasing ABM fees, banks are required to write to BOJ to provide justification and request the non-objection of the regulator. Fees can be increased if the regulator indicates in writing a non-objection to the proposed change in fees or 
the regulator does not object within 30 days of the date on which the application for a non-objection is made. And having received a non-objection, the bank should give at least 45 days notice to the public of its intention to adjust the fees. Uh, do you think this is sufficient? Is this, is this to your satisfaction? If, if I may, if I may, George. Uh, I don't know if I'd convey good morning um, to, your, to you. Yeah, man, yeah, man, you did, you did. Okay, thanks. Um, I have a bit of issue there, and it's interesting that you, you jumped right to that one. Having ATM machines is an alternative to having allowing customers to have access to their money in the bank, right? And the bank acknowledges that people need to get cash. But the BOJ is silent on the charges for, for people getting their monies out of their accounts because of the ABM charges. Secondly, I don't know if it has changed, but my recent um, um, information is that while you can use a card across the different institutions. You will incur charges, right? So if you are a, a BNS customer, and you go to an NCB or Sajiko or a first global machine, there are charges you will incur for what they call third-party machine as against their own. I have a difficulty with that, um, but I won't delve into that in great details now. Um, those increased charges are higher charges that people that will, 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 will have to pay. Number two, in regard to the increase in, in, in service charges and the no objection, I think that's a bit obscure, okay? Bank A applies for an a, a increase from $10 to $20. Is it that the BOJ is going to absolutely say no to the, to, to the increase by $10 or to say no, $2 increase and they either have an increase or no increase at all? That's a bit nebulous, and I would, I would, I would really want to know how operationally um, that will happen. That will be dealt with. But on the surface of it, it seems a bit, a bit, a bit um, um, challenging. What they've said, it, what what they've said in terms of the publication of the fees, you know, they've said that transparently and comprehensively disclose ABM fees and charges, including including displaying them prominently at ABM locations and that financial customers are to know the full costs associated with ABM services and be able to compare costs across providers. So we should anticipate from the reading of this, Fitz Jackson, that the ABM is going to be uh, going to have a lot of posters on the wall showing me, if I'm an NCB customer, what it costs to, con to take my money out of this NCB ABM. And if I go to a Scotia or a JN or a VMB or a, a VM, I, what, what I should, 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 should be paying based on the letter, based on how this reads, that's what we are anticipating. I think you're reading, I think, the fifth bullet in the... In yes, the, uh, yes. In the but separately, they talk about it. Not, the the, the, the non-objection as an element by itself is what I will zero okay. on. Um, well, yes, the breakdown of the fee in order to justify it, but the objection and non-objection... I'm with you on that. that. I'm with you on that. Uh, but but here, here's the thing, though, uh, Dennis. Here's the thing mm -hmm. that, 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 that I've, I've always had a problem with. When you go to the ABM and the machine appears to be in working order based on the display on the screen. You insert your card, and then you get no cash. They say error or whatever it is. You can't complete the transaction, and it's a declined transaction. Isn't there a fee for declined transaction? And how is it that the customer should pay for those declined transactions when it is no fault of their own? I'm sure the technology is advanced enough for you to know when the error is from the customer inputting the incorrect um, PIN or doing something that causes the transaction to decline, as opposed to when the software and the hardware malfunctions combine or individually cause that transaction to be declined. In other words, all the, the, the declined transactions, the reasons for the declined transactions should be distilled so you can know which one is the fault of the customer, so you charge them for that, which one is the fault of the software and the hardware, so the bank doesn't charge you for that. I, I, I wonder if that's not a glaring omission from these service standards. Um, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> you know, um, I agree about the fees being published right at each ABM. Uh, because of the type of society where we, you know, we should get that information out there. 
Um, I don't necessarily agree about the banks having to write in and, and get an objection, but I agree also with what you're saying, and this is what I think is most critical. The, the BOJ needs to ensure that the practices of the banks, so when it comes to things mm-hmm. like how you charge people and for those transactions you speak about, that those things are dealt with and people should be fined significantly if it is found out that their software is not handling that. And those are the things we need to deal with. Now, I believe that the way for us to drive fees down as much as possible is for us to get greater competition in the market. Because what you're going to be doing, you're going to be setting up a situation if you have um, people having to write in for more regulated fees again. And that's going to be an issue for the market, just like we've seen with the transport sector, right? That the market cannot find an equilibrium and you're going to get inefficient service. But I, certainly in terms of how the software is managed, right, and what people are charged, those are the things that need to be in a code of conduct, which is why I say the BOJ has not gone far enough and they've spent years now trying to deal with this thing, which is really unacceptable, right, and not protecting consumers. So those are the things that need to be dealt with. I, kind of, I, differ, I differ with both of you about those charges for the malfunction. You cited the example that you gave, George. Yes. If you go into an ATM machine with a card, and either for inadequate funds or, or the machine malfunction, it, you should not be charged a fee. That's what we're saying. Not, not at all. Not, not, yeah. not, not, um, not if it is the fault of the machine or not. If you don't make a withdrawal, you have not benefited from that interaction with the machine. Mm. Why should you be worse off? Mm-hmm. I agree with that. What too. is yeah. the cost to the to the bank from the fact that you didn't get to 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 um, withdraw the yes. money because enough money? It's not like you went into an overdraft yes. in our bank and used the bank's money, and then it charges you have for having used this money because you went below your balance. So different kettle. But should that be written into these standards? That is the bigger po- is the bigger question, Fitz Jackson, exactly. because that's not there. That, that's, that, 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 that's my point. That and not only re- yes, it should be written on it, which makes it which it removes such a charge. And the other thing about notice, from my recollection, when you go to the ATM machine with a card and there's a fee in the transaction, you don't know what that fee is until after the transaction, in other words, after you have incurred the cost. Mm-hmm. In the bill that I have before Parliament, one of the requirements for ATM machine is that when you end, put your card in the machine to make a transaction, and you indicate to the machine what transaction you want to make. Whatever applicable charge there is for that transaction, the customer should be notified so that they can make a decision whether to proceed or, proceed or not. Not after the transaction is completed and the fees are already incurred. Knowing it now, what's the difference? You can't, you can't go to the bank to get it reversed. Like when they never, never. You, know, so you, in need, fact, to, you, it, need, you need to arm the customer with the information yeah, 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 before. Fact, Fitz and George, you know where the best time for that information to come up? On the screen right before the transaction is completed. <laughs> exactly. Totally with you. So you can no, opt right. out. You can opt out if the cost is not to your exactly. liking. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Boy, boy, boy. Um, you know, well, you know, I, I hope the... Go ahead, know. Dennis. You know how we know we're making progress in this country. Yeah. It agrees with me. <laughs> 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 well, uh, gentlemen, I hope that the BOJ is listening to the suggestions <laughs> that you're making this morning so that they can make some amendments <laughs> to the minimum standards that they've published. But here's another one that jumped out at me um, about the availability of cash, right? I've heard several stories about people driving all over the city and elsewhere in the country and they go to all of the ABMs and they have no money. Um, the Bank of Jamaica is saying this morning that the maximum time out of cash in the urban and resort areas will be 60 consecutive minutes and other areas 180 minutes. Is this sufficient time to replenish the ABMs? And um, do you think the, the Bank of Jamaica should have placed in their minimum standards what, what they'll do, what will be triggered if it is that um, the ABMs are not being replenished in this time that they're, they're putting here in the standards? Very, 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 very good point you raised, and I'm glad that you raised it. Um, the replenishment time, you know, that may vary depend on location and, and other variables like that. However, 
when I read through the, 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 the document, I was wondering, why is it that they omitted a provision to say, um, if a machine in Crossroads, say, a uh, 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 NCB machine in uh, other location in Crossroads is out, they can put an a SM, SMS message that they have that technology to the customers of the bank mm -hmm. to say this machine is out. It will be out it's in it. It's in it. Fits. It's in it. It's under the heading maintenance and management of service disruption. It says implement systems for real-time notification to DTI, well, to the bank when the machine is out of service and notify customers when a machine malfunctions oh, fine, for fine, a prolonged fine, period of time. Fine, it's fine, there. Fine, fine, fine. I'm happy for that. Yeah. Well, though, yes, I know that you said, I recall. It's there. I've been ready. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But, but to come back to the question about the replenishment time, um, I would rather be informed in terms of what time, what, what is enough, what is a reasonable time for the replenishment given locations and so on. But it should be kept to a minimum. Mm. But one of the points I was getting at, though, is if it is that based on the standards here of the 60 minutes in Kingston and the, the ABM is not replenished in the 60 minutes and even up, say you went there at 12 o'clock and even up to 5 o'clock, they still have not replenished that ABM. Should something else be triggered, you know, coming from the BOG, a particular sanction or something to do with the bank because it has not replenished in the time that it was supposed to honor replenishing that ABM? I, 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 I agree that there should be a fee for that. And and it's easy to manage, you know, because you're dealing with software now. So the, the, yeah. the machine should be able to send a signal to the bank to say, listen, we have X amount of cash available um, for how many hours based on the usage. And it, you just organize a thing like that? Yes, then it's because and it, it, it did say that, you know, then, that they, they are required to have some triggers when you are going to uh, reach a minimum level, not empty. Yeah. Yeah, so that yeah, they yeah. replenishment that. point. But here's the thing, gentlemen yeah. and, and lady, as as we get to the end, here's the thing. Reading this document and seeing all the requirements here, and this is a comprehensive thing the BOJ has put together, notwithstanding the the points that we've highlighted that should be uh, that should be addressed that are not addressed in the in the in the, the service standards as published. Don't we realize that it's going to take a significant effort? from the deposit-taking institutions to abide by these service standards, the introduction of technology, the streamlining of replenishment schedules and all of that, that takes cash. It's a cost to the bank. It's a yes. Hold on, hold on. It's a significant cost to the bank. So you know where I'm going. If it's a significant cost to the bank, you know what happens to the customer. Have the pay some might. You know, you know, George, it's interesting to say that. When we hear of the multi-billion dollar profits that the banks make and their functionary multi-billion dollar compensation packages, right? It's okay. But anytime the, the customers who are the source of those profits and benefits is to get improved service, oh, there is a cost. I, I, I have a challenge with that. Yeah, we have a good challenge, business, but it's a reality good fix. Business, yes. Good business requires good reasonable service period take that but 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 dennis the the mm -hmm. fact is you know how the banks operate yeah, the, yeah and as i said when you read these standards it's a lot of things that they have to be in conformance right, with right. it's not yeah. gonna, it's not it's gonna it's gonna cost them significantly administratively yeah. technology only and otherwise yeah so the, the, this is the argument judge that you, you the banks really need to introduce ai to deal with those things right so we need to have some technology improvement because once once you invest in technology, then you don't have to be spending a lot of money again after that. But the second thing, and most important, is that we now need to be looking at competition. Competition, I think the ideal thing for it is the digital currency that, that the minister launched because what we should be doing is looking at developing from the government's point of view a wallet for persons to use and, and, and also establishing incentives with places that people use cash frequently and get people to start using that. Because the, the thing about this is that you can actually spend all of that money and money circulate without it going into the banking system. Mm. And that's where competition is going to come in, and that is where we need to look at, because that is the long-term solution to yes. 
but 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 Fitz Jackson, take your point. Then it's a good point. But Fitz Jackson, as we leave you, you have another battle to fight because you and I know that the the, the increased charges are going to come. Um, we have to have to fight it, and as I say that, I want to say this, and it's very important and very heartwarming. The motion I tabled and the subsequent approval by the House was not voted against as the other bill by the government side. And that for me is a positive sign. The government did not lose its majority on this occasion to kill the motion that I tabled. And, you know, if we can collaborate in a similar way on the broader issues, you know, not only in banking services but in other areas, it shows how much the consuming public and the public at large can be the real beneficiary. And you need to bargain. and you need to lend your muscle to Dennis Strong's call for a code of conduct. I think it will help. No, there is there is a code of conduct provision in the banking services act, you know. The the, the, yeah. the challenge is for is for the BOJ to become more proactive in promulgating provisions under the code of conduct provision in the legislation which can be done through regulation yes we have to run gentlemen but we agree that this is a very good first step from the boj notwithstanding the gaps as we see them and and, and we'll work to, to to plug those gaps and i join you in that comment okay it's a, it's a it's a welcome and big first step all right dennis chung all right thank you okay. fitz jackson thank you we're turning our attention now to the jacksil area where there's a bushfire, videos and images of a bushfire in the Jacksonville area of St. Andrew have been circulating on social media since uh, Tuesday evening. Commissioner of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, JFB Stuart Beckford, confirmed with our news center that the fire brigade responded to the bushfire Tuesday evening. And Commissioner Beckford says the JFB has since received assistance from the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF. For an update now, we're being joined by him, Commissioner of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, Stuart Beckford. Good morning to you. Hi, good morning to you and your listeners. Thank you so much for joining us here on Nationwide this morning. The significance, uh, is it, um, has it expanded across uh, several acres of land, uh, Commissioner Beckford? Uh, well, up to last night when we left there, we would have extinguished uh, most of the, the, the fires that were burning. Um, much of it was inaccessible and posed. No life, no threat to life or, or property. Uh, we left there probably about 11.30 um, last night. We are back there this morning. Thankfully, it's not as bad as, as, as it was yesterday when we got the initial call at about 2 o'clock. And so we are pretty comfortable with what is there now, and we have a unit there. And they are monitoring. It's inaccessible to them, but they are monitoring to ensure that uh, it doesn't... Um, get out of control and, and, and pose any threat to life or property. And could you locate where the, the, the bushfire w was happening? Was it close to a property in the mountainous region of, of Jacksonville located for us? Right. So um, Millsboro has Alman Court, um, I'm sorry, close um, in the Tavistock region, uh, that general uh, vicinity, Mountain Spring. As I said, a lot of it was, was, was inaccessible, but though inaccessible, uh, given the condition that existed on the ground yesterday um, afternoon into evening, uh, very strong winds, and the winds kept changing direction, and that would have posed a significant challenge to the team on the ground. And that is when we would have decided, having used our drone technology to do a flyover and do an assessment, we and, and recognize what was happening on the ground. We would have um, contacted the JDF Air Wing and they provided support. They did approximately 15 drops yesterday, and that would have helped um, to quiet things down a whole lot. Uh, so we have to commend them for, for that effort. And I must also commend the men and women of the KSA division who worked tirelessly from yesterday at 2 until after 11 last night when they left. Just to um, clarify, uh, Commissioner Beckford, is the, the fire completely extinguished or is it contained? It, it, it is contained. There, 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 there are pockets of fires there now. And as I said earlier, there, there is a team there on the, on the ground right now. Uh, they are doing some mopping up um, exercise as we speak. Um, there are areas that are burning, but um, based on their assessment, it, it poses no threat to life or property. Uh, but we will continue to maintain our presence in the Jacksonville community for as long as it's necessary. Uh, because we know with the, once the wind picks up, then, you know, a small fire can quickly 
you know, uh, become a big um, um, fire that will pose threat to life and, um, life and property. Is it, so officially, to monitor. is it officially bushfire season, Commissioner? Well, yes, it is. And, uh, you know, in, in Jamaica, uh, you know, maybe five, ten years ago, bushfire season for us, it only runs for between January and the end of March. Maybe some of it is still over into April. But what we are seeing now, George, is that we are having bushfire season starting from as early as December, and it runs right down to the end of August. Mm-hmm. September, we get a little bit of rain, and, and October, and we get a break there. Uh, because we are experiencing, you know, longer drought conditions in Jamaica, and uh, climate change, you know, uh, I'm sure has a lot to do with it. Uh, and so we continue to encourage, um, you know, farmers in particular, and, 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 and residents in, in, in some of these communities where we continue to grapple with the incidents of persons just burning and not monitoring while they are burning to ensure that that fire that they lit does not uh, get out of control and pose a threat to, um, to life and, and property. You know, there was an incident last year where there was a gentleman working on a construction site upstairs Spookyville side, and uh, it was a, a, a spliff deal, you know, Commissioner, that team discard, yeah. and it, it burned. It's supposed to be the fire. Well, you would know because your 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 team responded, and yeah. it it it's it, it's it careless acts like these that 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 put lives and property in jeopardy and and, and stretch the resources of the fire brigade. And you are so correct, sir, because we, we have so. Let's put things into context. Last year we we had a really bad year, and by and and you know, I mean really really bad. Uh, and here is, what, uh, here is why I say that. So between January and March last year, that's 2023, right? Yes. We would have responded to an equivalent number of bushfire calls for the entire 2022. Mm. So we saw an almost 90% increase in bushfire calls last year, right? Uh, so far, up to the end of uh, February, beginning of March, I have not had the, the details of March yet because we are still telling and analyzing the data. But up until the end of February into March this year, we have seen a 49% reduction. So that is some good news. Yes. But uh, it, 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 I, we take a little comfort in that because we still continue to see in certain, divis- in certain divisions across the country. So, for example, um, Manchester, not Manchester, sorry, Clarendon, uh, St. Catherine, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, and now we are seeing it in the Kingston and St. John's division where, you know, we are having an optic, especially since the start of March. Uh, it has been a little bit hotter than probably February and January. Yes. And so we, we are seeing an optic. We are, we are hoping that the rains will come soon uh, to kind of put a damper on that. But it's really dry and so and windy, and, and, and those two combinations, those two factors, sorry, um, you know, is what uh, will drive bushfires. With how and the climate has changed, see. Commissioner, have you, and, and, the, and the increasing strain on the fire resources and, of course, the, the human and otherwise, have you now begun contemplating how you're going to be meeting with community organizations, citizens' organizations, to see if you can put in some man-made fire breaks to ameliorate the situation? Because you, the way you fought bushfires in the past and the frequency, that has changed. So you, you have to do something now to help yourself and to help the, the, the people in the community feel more secure. Exactly. We have to adapt to the change in time. And as, as you already mentioned, the, the, the climate has a lot to do with it, what we have been seeing over the last five years. And so we would have engaged community members across um, those problematic areas. Because we are, uh, So, for example, in Portland, last year we had a terrible year in Portland last year. And Portland was always one of the wettest areas in Jamaica. Uh, that has changed somewhat, um, Portland St. Mary. Um, we are not seeing that this year. But what we have been doing is focusing on those communities. So yeah, the farm in Belt in St. Elizabeth, for example, Flagaman and those areas, we have been working with community members. Uh, we have started programs on the ground, um, training fire wardens, so persons can, can, can help themselves until the brigade gets um, to their location. Um, we have been sensitizing community members through you know, town hall meetings and, and community meetings and, and so on. Um, but there's a lot to be done, and, and, and that is why we continue, you know, to use uh, gentle moral suasion to encourage persons, you know, to desist from lighting fires um, if you don't have to. And if you do have to, 
then get some guidance as to how you can go about doing it safely. Uh, because the truth is, you light a fire here, um, you know, maybe say in Jacksonville, we have that bushfire burning spark from that can travel up to a kilometer away and start another fire. And what we have been doing last night is basically what we were doing last night is chasing the fires yeah. up to a point. Uh, because they keep popping up, because sparks keep leaving one location, traveling to the next, starting another fire, and we have to keep chasing it, and so on. So we we, we, we continue our public education effort uh, to, to get Jamaicans to understand the importance of not lighting fires at this time. Uh, and the importance of not calling <coughs> the fire brigade and saying there's a fire when there's none. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we continue to struggle with the issue of wrong calls. Um, uh, we, we saw a slight reduction in the numbers. I don't have the figures in front of me while I'm speaking now. But we saw a slight reduction um, um, last year. I think what hurt us last year was those wrong calls, the rebound threat. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you know, be, so we would have responded to, I recall, um, to close to uh, maybe 60 wrong calls during that period. Um, in you know, in relation to those bomb threats that were being sent to, to schools and different institutions and, uh, and so on, so that would have hurt. The, I mean, you know, would have caused the numbers, um, you know, to to, to to go up a bit than we would have liked. But yeah, we continue to struggle with that, and and of course, you know, we we continue to encourage Jamaicans to desist from from, from that practice. It's it, it, it's dangerous. It put the firefighters' lives at risk. We have we have, we have seen uh, in the past where. We would have gone on a, um, a false car. Not knowing that it's a false car because we can't determine that it is, and we cannot say we're not coming. Even if we suspect, we can't say we're not going. Our first mode um, is to respond. Our first action is to respond. And then we, we, you know, that is when we will find out that something, you know, that, that it's a prank call. But we have had instances where we are going to and returning from and would have been involved in accidents. And, and, yeah. and, and so it ties up our resources, uh, especially at a time like this when we are responding to so many bushfires. Have to leave it there, Stuart Beckford, Commissioner of the Jamaica Fire Brigade. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Commissioner. The pleasure was mine. Thank you for having me.